dangerous But she's from Nicaragua Thought you was Persian love Are we turning up? Or are we wasting time? Girl, don't waste my time Hey guys, what's popping? What's good today? We are in Mashingo from Gweru. I've not filmed a lot lately because it's been hectic, y'all. But then today we're going to Great Zimbabwe. So I thought that's something that really is worth, you know, filming and just showing you guys. So we're going to be taking you around. In the meantime, we're here with my uncle and I don't know, he's just running his business first before we go. So yeah. Stay tuned. Say hi. What? Wait, you don't even want to take all this one? No, no. Sure. Uh, no, I just removed them. Hello? Why? Because I'm eating. What are you eating? Like eating. Bread, eggs. You can pee anyway here. That's how they do. Ta-da! I'm in my brick. When I put it back, I'll not sit there again. This is Mutiriki Dam. Guys, how lovely is this? Pretty little island. Another one there. I don't know if you can see it. This is so cool, guys. And this big one right here. This one. Right? Ain't that lovely? Then this is the dam wall. So you can either sightsee from there or from here. So, yeah. That's just about it, guys. I was really trying to catch some crocs, but. Seems like there is no luck for us today. Okay, so we are here, guys. This is Great Zimbabwe way and we're planning on going on our own but then we might need a tour guide because we get lost it's a big place mm -hmm. yep i think come this way to get lost yep and <laughs> this is what i want i want the native something I don't, I don't want, yes i want the native thing <clears throat> Yeah, we were greeted by monkeys, by the way. So it's quite exciting, guys. And the tour guide is very cheap. That's like two dollars per person. So it's worth it, guys. I I would like to believe that if you go with a tour guide, they will be able to show you everywhere. You understand? And like, if you go by yourself, you'll be using the map, and it's not so clear. When they say information right here, when you this shirt. So okay. Red Zimbabwe is divided into three major sections. Where you are going to see the ancient civilization. Okay. We have what we call the hill from right on top of the hill up there. It was the residing place of all the kings who took turns to rule Great Zimbabwe. Okay. Then we have the valley complex where the junior wives of the king, you know, stayed. Okay. And the great enclosure is the residing place of the first wife of the king. Of the king. And we did the well preserved the structure. Okay. And it's quite big. Because of its size, that's why Great Zimbabwe was rated second to the pyramids of Egypt. When we're talking about African civilization, but uh, the whole inner you know, place was built between 13th century to 14th century. And this is our site museum where we have all the artifacts which have built around the area of Great Zimbabwe, including the Sophonera Zimbabwe Grounds. Okay. 
think from uh, how I get on day, I think this one is the reason why they chose the place when they put their time sit here. Okay, okay then. For animal, for self farming, I think it was good evening for animal farming, it was cheap. of the place called Zimbabwe. All these dry stone walls which you are going to see, they were built by the Shona speaking people. And the Shonas used to say they came from Mapungowe. Mapungowe. Yeah, it's a place which is in South Africa near Shashe. And when they get here, it was around, you know, 13th century. So from that date, say 13th century to, you know, 17th century, they were here constructing this, you know, but they said the reason why they chose this place, it was full of natural resources. I'm talking in terms of gold, coal, and iron. Those are the minerals which they found closer to the site. And they were very also important. Like uh, copper, they could make nickels and you know, spades. Okay. Iron, they could make iron chisels and hammers to do the shaping of the drive, you know, the these not granite rocks. Gold was for trade. Okay. Well, they traded with the Arabs, with the Persians, wow. with the Chinese. So wow. in our site museum, you are going to see these artifacts which were picked around the place in Babylon. Okay. But after 400 years, there were some, you know, like uh, problems which arise from Great Zimbabwe. They said at least some succession disputes uh, made the people to be divided and some left Great Zimbabwe to some other places. Okay. But the first group was under the leadership of Changamere Dombo. They went all the way to where Blawai is. 55 kilometers after Blawai, they established a settlement like Great Zimbabwe, but it's smaller in size, which is called Kami. Oh, Kami ruins. Yes, okay. but there were some other, you know, like uh, small, smaller groups which went out of Great Zimbabwe. But they built some size. All these open grounds used to be filled with you know, dark structures, dark huts. Okay. But they collapsed and buried. So to get up to the top, we have the ancient part and we have the modern, the water gate. But I prefer us to use the ancient going up, then okay. we come down the modern. But all of the three ways converge right on top of the hill. Okay. 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 Thank you. After the hill and the village oh, were in there, okay. okay, with the trees inside, that's a well-preserved structure around this place, that's in Southern Africa. Okay. Yeah. The great enclosure. The great enclosure for the first wife. Oh. And what is the wife? <laughs> in actual fact, you know, this great Zimbabwe was built by the king who was, you know, uh, in our you know, polygamy. Okay. They okay. said the last king to rule Great Zimbabwe, but the name of the city of Great was made almost 2020. Trying to reach King Solomon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, how is this place preserved? We do have at least a department of archaeologists who do. Okay. And some of the bylaws are protected to that. Especially the act. They took advantage of the nature of the two boulders and they erected steps to between the boulders. It's for defense, for fighting back. Ah, these two. Yeah. Okay. They'll let you get into the passage and they start rolling stones too. Oh! oh. Wow, one of their defense mechanisms. Yes. Nice. For a lake Motiriku. Okay. Motiriku is the name of the river. Kara okay. was the name given to that, uh, you know, gem 
because of the white men who owned the land where the lake was built. Okay. Yes. All right. So this is Lake Mutiriki or Lake Kyle from here. You mean that? No, in order to force people to bow down as part of uh, in a respect to for the king. The king yeah. <laughs> Mr. Steve, you said mind your heart. She doesn't need to mind her heart. She's a. Uh... Sure. I'm short. Sure He's speaking but, for but, you. But, but I don't know on the end here. Because I'm not sure. <coughs> Especially here. Oh, mm. she's, she's boring down there. <laughs> uh, this enclosure was the king's chamber. Okay. Or the king's palace. <sighs> this is the place where all the kings resided. If you approach the king, you reside inside here. So this is the great enclosure. That is the village, the village. right? Then the valley is between the village and the great enclosure. Where you see scattered enclosures there. Ah. So, the okay. Okay, this enclosure was used by the Sangoma. Oh. Uh, a, a, a herbalist who used to work hand in hand with the king. You know, what is Babalao. Oh, okay. They found some, you know, medicinal stuff left. Okay. okay. It's not a man my cave. Okay. It's a place where the king used to uh, store his, you know, very precious in, uh, in items. Oh. That's included gold, processed gold, uh, in uh, stones which contain some, you know, iron. But the cave was also used as a, as a megaphone, as an amplifier for communication. The oh. king could call from here, then there would be some rebound of echoes to the great enclosure. Yeah. So oh, he could wow. easily use the cave to call a wife. And let me try to shout. Hello! Can you hear the echoes? No. Hello! Hello? Yes! Masuela <laughs> say! <laughs> 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 Cool okay, okay. Yes. melting of copper, iron, and gold was done inside here. We're uh, here this before, right? Enclosure, no. we call it <laughs> the ritual enclosure ritual. or the temple. Worshipping or uh, ritual activities were conducted from there. And within the enclosure, they found six of the subs. Zimbabwe birds and uh, now we've got them housed in the site museum for protection it's which measures the movement of the wool oh. yeah uh, you know monitoring the movement of the wool okay the, I, okay the, uh, like the earth if the earth moves the walls yes if the earth moves then they will, uh, they will cause a movement on the wall okay then at least it'll be recorded even if there's no earthquake, but the, the wall Sometimes moves. Sometimes they naturally move. Then at least they, they record the movement.
Ich weiß nicht. 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 So guys, um, this is the museum, right? And we we're not allowed to film inside, but it's generally a summary of everything that took place there. And uh, yo, it, it was just so much, I can't even explain, but they were showing how like, okay, there are models of the whole place and <clears throat> explanations on how they used to live, how they made a living, the type of work they did, you know, how they, got by you know that kind of stuff they are trade their remains that show all these things so the artifacts um, allowed them to come up with you know explanations to some things that didn't make sense before so that was it guys today was fun it was a nice store I hope you guys will enjoy this so bye for now <laughs>